The sudden Japanese attack upon the United States and British territories, on December 7 and 8, 1941, almost immediately placed Burma on the front line. The armistice signed between Japan and Thailand in late December, put Burma in even greater danger of invasion, sooner than anyone could expect. The defense of a broad Burma-Thailand frontier, with limited forces, proved to be an impossible task. Within a week of Pearl Harbor, on December 16, as part of the Malaya Offensive, the Japanese carried out the first ground action in Burma, when the 143rd Infantry Regiment of the 55th Division, crossed the border with Thailand and seized the airport at Victoria Point, in Tanasarim District, on Burma's southernmost point. The first air raid on Rangoon, launched on December 23, removed any doubt that Burma was the next Japanese target. The bombing inflicted heavy casualties among civilians, and caused the population to flee the town, ultimately resulting in problems with the operation of port facilities, and the work of essential city services. It was only the first of a series of air raids, which continued for the following days and months, causing difficulties in the overall defense of Burma, since Rangoon was the only point of entry for supplies into the country, as there were almost no roads into India. The skies above the city, quickly turned into a scene of desperate dogfights, as the Flying Tigers and the few RAF pilots, did all they could to try and protect, this crucial port. Amid preparation for the defense of Burma, to furtherly disrupt the already disrupted command structure, on January 15, 1942, General Sir Archibald Wavell, Commander-in-Chief of India, had to depart for Java, to assume command of a newly formed American-British-Dutch-Australian Command, also known as ABDACOM, or South West Pacific Command. Introduced during the Arcadia Conference in Washington, attended by President Franklin Roosevelt, and Prime Minister Winston Churchill, which began on December 22, 1941, ABDACOM was a clumsy formed joint command, organized in the middle of the ongoing battle, and which covered an enormous area of Southeast Asia, from Burma in the west, to Dutch New Guinea and the Philippines in the east, held only by a thinly spread international force. It quickly became a textbook example, of how not to run a joined allied headquarters. Right from the beginning, Wavell encountered problems. The communication lines between the physically scattered commands were overextended, resulting in delays in receiving, and delivering messages, causing a lack of a clear picture of the actual situation on the ground. Consequently, some officers failed to follow, or merely ignored the orders from above, forcing Wavell, to deal more with international problems and politics, rather than military matters. Meanwhile, around 35,500 well-equipped, and highly motivated battle-hardened veterans of the 15th Japanese Army, led by General Shojiro Ida, made final preparations for an invasion of Burma. At the beginning of January 1942, the 55th Division, under Lieutenant General Hiroshi Takeuchi, finished its concentration at the border with Burma, right across to Moulmain, ready to spearhead the attack on Rangoon, soon joined by the 33rd Division, under Lieutenant General Shozo Sakurai, just recently arrived from China. Against the elite Japanese troops, stood two under strength, and poorly trained British divisions, the 1st Burma and 17th Indian Infantry Division, and upon that latest, all might of invasion would fall. At the beginning of January 1942, the 17th Division under General John Smith, with its sole remaining brigade, the 46th, was reinforced with the 16th Indian and 2nd Burma Brigade, which brought it near to its full combat strength, and was assigned to protect Tanasarim District, and southern approaches to Rangoon. Smith's task was challenging, requiring him to disperse his forces over a large area, focusing on halting the Japanese advance to Rangoon from the south, by utilizing three natural obstacles, the Salween, the Bilin and the Sitang rivers. British commanders, believed these natural obstacles, if defended well, would if not stop, at least delay the Japanese advance long enough, until sufficient reinforcements arrived. And while the 17th Division still tried to organize its defense, the Japanese troops wasted no time and moved in, aiming to clear the entire Tanasarim district. On January 15, 
The lead elements of the 55th Division, centered around the 3rd Battalion of the 112th Infantry Regiment, crossed the Burma-Thailand frontier, and advanced towards the coastal town of Tavoy, defended by the 6th Burma Rifles, under Lieutenant Colonel John Colson Cotton. Having heard rumors that the Japanese were approaching, Cotton sent patrols, and set roadblocks on a few roads leading to Tavoy, and on the evening of January 15, the first skirmishes broke out. Gradually, the Japanese forces pushed back the inexperienced and poorly trained troops, of the 6th Burma Rifles and elements of frontier force. In the early morning of January 17, the two companies of the 3rd Burma Rifles arrived from Mergui, a town further south along the coast, to reinforce the defense of Tavoy. However, despite the arrival of reinforcements and the spirited defense, following chaotic fighting that raged for days, by January 19, the Japanese had pushed defenders to town. After losing the airfield, the Tavoy garrison completely disintegrated, and the remnants of the Burma rifles, withdrew in small parties north through the jungle and to Mergui further south. The fighting around Tavoy, although only a prelude to the invasion, demonstrated all the main features of Japanese tactics, which they would employ throughout the early stage of the battle in Burma. Fast-moving Japanese infantry, had no problem moving through the dense jungle, outflanking scattered British positions, while the British, on the other hand, unable to establish anything that remotely resembled a continuous line, were forced to concentrate their defense on roadblocks and river crossings. Following the loss of Tavoy, the garrison at Mergui, now cut off from all land routes, and in danger of ending up encircled, was evacuated the following day, on January 20, directly by sea to Rangoon, where the last parties arrived on January 24, leaving the entire southern Tanasarim district, in Japanese hands. These first clashes, raised some concerns about the overall performance of the Burma Rifles battalions. Therefore, the headquarters of the 17th Indian Division, issued an order on January 25, to remove all heavy weapons and equipment, except rifles, from Burma Rifles battalions under its command, and placed the men in reserve, to use them to replace losses. However, the rapid development of events, will put this order on hold. The further evidence of the poor combat performance, and unreliability of Burma rifles, that ultimately led to this order, came on January 20, when the bulk of the 55th Japanese Infantry Division, attacked positions held by the elements of the 16th Brigade, mainly from the 4th Burma rifles near Kapkarek, just next to the border with Thailand. And although, at first, it appeared that attack was much heavier, and carried out by far superior force than it actually was, there seems little doubt that more trained, seasoned troops, could have maintained their position for much longer. In fear that it might be overrun and annihilated, on January 22, the 16th Indian Brigade, received an order to retreat to Martaban, on the right bank of the Salween River, allowing the Japanese to gain cheap initial success. For the Japanese, the beginning of the campaign, proved much easier than expected, having severe consequences in boosting their morale, while at the same time, decreasing that, of Indian troops. For the next few days, the 16th Indian, and the 2nd Burma Brigade, reinforced the defences around Martaban and adjacent Molmain, a town with a population of 50,000, on the eastern bank of the Salween estuary, aiming to protect the road, running along the coast to Rangoon, while the Japanese rest and reorganized their troops. In the meantime, the 48th Indian Infantry Brigade, consisting entirely of Gurkhas, arrived in Rangoon and, after it was attached to the 17th Indian Division, rushed forward to take the positions along the Bilin River, and remained there in reserve. The attack on Molmain, began in the early morning of January 30, when the Japanese assaulted the airfield about six kilometers beyond the town, held by the detachment of the 2nd Burma Brigade. This time, the defenders put out the stiff resistance and held their perimeter firmly. However, despite the determined resistance, the garrison was slowly squeezed back towards the river, and in the evening, General John Smith, the 17th Division commander, assessed that the town defense could not hold out, and that retreat was inevitable, so he ordered his troops to withdraw to Martaban. 
On the morning of January 31, the bulk of the 2nd Burma Brigade was evacuated across the Salween estuary, by river steamers to Martaban, leaving what little heavy weapons they had behind. However, amid much confusion, at least part of the 1 Battalion, the headquarters, and the remnants of other units were left behind, on the wrong side of the Salween, and had to cross the river as best they could, broken up into small parties and with most of them, leaving rifles and other equipment, on the other side of the river. Following the evacuation from Molmain, General Smith was anxious to give up Martaban, and withdraw further to the Bilin River, as his troops had already suffered heavy casualties, with most of the Burma rifles and Indian units, no longer fit for further fighting without rest and reorganization, in such an extent, that he had to send the battered 2nd Burma Brigade in the rear, to take positions on the Sitang's west bank, and conduct patrols along the river. However, his superior, commander of British forces in Burma, General Thomas Hutton, refused his request, ordering him to hold the line on the river Salween, and to give no further ground. Immediately after the fall of Molmain, Martaban became subject to heavy Japanese shelling and machine gun fire. At the same time, the small Japanese parties, began crossing the Salween at different points, infiltrating through the thin and overextended lines of the 17th Indian Division. On February 8, the 33rd Division joined the battle and, after crossing the Salween, near Parn in the north, they established a firm bridgehead, while the 55th Division, in the south, accomplished the same, just north of Martaban. After days of fierce and chaotic fighting, and since all attempts to push the Japanese back failed, in danger of being surrounded, on February 14, the 17th Indian Division withdrew further westwards, to a new line behind the Bilin River. Unfortunately, Bilin River, offered a favorable defensive position only on a map, as the river was shallow, and could be easily walked across in most places, and therefore, posed no obstacle at all. Nevertheless, on February 16, the 16th Indian Infantry Brigade, occupied defensive positions along the Bilin River, while the fresh 48th Indian Brigade, deployed behind it in depth. The 46th Brigade, went into a divisional reserve. Seeing that the main Japanese thrust was coming from the south, not from the north, General Hutton, in a desperate search for reinforcements, ordered the transfer of the 2nd Battalion, King's Own Yorkshire Light Infantry, from the 1st Burma Division, to reinforce the exhausted 17th Division. The Japanese, on the other hand, astounded by their successes so far, had clear psychological dominance over their opponents, and in order not to lose initiative, they pursued the Indian troops closely. In a race towards the bridge over the Sitang River, the lead elements of the 33rd Division, in the early hours of February 15, crossed the Bilin River, a day before the British had fully deployed. The surprise discovery of Japanese troops, already across the river and dug in, came the following day, when the 2nd Battalion King's own Yorkshire Light Infantry, moved to occupy their positions on the 16th Brigade's left flank, encountered the elements of the 214th Regiment from the 33rd Division. For the following two days, the 2nd Battalion, King's Own Yorkshire Light Infantry, and the 16th Indian Brigade, made several unsuccessful attempts to clear the Western Bank while, at the same time, being pressured by the 215th Regiment from the south. On February 17, to support the 16th, the 48th Indian Brigade, took over the southern sector of the Bilin defences. Yet, despite their best efforts, they were unable to withstand the ferocious Japanese attacks, and on the evening of the same day, the 215th Regiment, crossed the river near Bilin village. To make matters even worse, on February 18, the 143rd Regiment of the 55th Japanese Division, landed on the coast near the village of Zerkali, and threatened the 17th Division's right flank from the south. The 17th Indian Division, now engaged in a fight with both divisions of the 15th Japanese Army, and decimated after days of heavy combat, was on the verge of being destroyed, and on February 19, frightened that the division may be annihilated, General Hutton gave permission to General Smith, to act according to his own judgment, and on the night of February 19, Smith ordered his exhausted troops to break contact, 
and began a 50 km long withdrawal along the road towards the Sitang River. Both Hutton and Smith believed that this deep, wide and fast-flowing river offered a final major obstacle to Rangoon to the advancing Japanese. The news about the arrival of the reinforcements also boosted their optimism. On February 20, the British 7th Armoured Brigade began arriving in Rangoon. This brigade, equipped with about 55 Stuart, or as the British call them, honey-like tanks, was on its way from the Middle East to Malaya, and after the fall of Singapore on February 15, was redirected to reinforce the defence of Burma. There were also plans, for the Australian 7th Infantry Division, on its way from Egypt to defend Australia, to be transferred to Burma, but the Australian government, repelled such an idea. However, before the 17th Indian Division, could occupy defensive positions on Sitang's western bank, it had to cross a narrow single-track railway bridge, to reach safety, and prior to reaching the bridge, which quickly became a bottleneck, the Indian troops had to move over a rough path, under bombing and strafing attacks, from both Japanese and Allied planes, and forward Japanese patrols, which made the withdrawal slow and disorganized. According to the withdrawal plan, the 48th Brigade moved first, assigned to the Divisional Reserve, closely followed by the 16th, while the 46th Brigade was to act as rearguard, to the 17th Division. Once all retreating troops were on the western bank, the sappers, who already had set demolition charges and destroyed ferries in the vicinity, had to blow the bridge up. For the protection of the eastern side of the bridgehead, Smith assigned two companies of the newly arrived, 2nd Battalion of the Duke of Wellington's Regiment, and the 3rd Burma Rifles, and gave the command of all troops within the bridgehead, to Brigadier Noel Hugh Jones, commander of the 48th Indian Brigade. Meanwhile, the chain of events that would eventually lead to disastrous consequences, had already been set in motion. Unknown to the British, a large Japanese force from the 214th and the 215th Regiments of the 33rd Division, had begun moving at top speed, by forced marches along jungle paths to the north, running parallel with the withdrawing British columns, as soon as they left the Bilin River, aiming to cut the withdrawing forces off at Sitang, once more demonstrating, an astonishing ability to move quickly through the jungle, a task for which they had been trained for months. Oblivious of how great danger was upon them, the 17th Division, continued with the slow retreat, and by the morning of February 22nd, the bulk of the division, was still miles away from the Sitang River. Meanwhile, frequent congestion of motor vehicles on the narrow bridge, resulted in long lines of cars, trucks and other vehicles, concentrated on the road, further slowing the troops' movement. In the early hours of February 22nd, as a complete surprise to British Indian troops, advancing Japanese broke out of the jungle, overcoming the 3rd Burma rifles, seizing Sitang village upstream of the bridge, and capturing nearby hills, before their advance to the bridge was halted. For the following few hours, a fierce battle raged between only a few hundred men from both sides, engaged in savage hand-to-hand -hand combat, gaining and losing the ground after bitter bayonet charges, and suffering heavy casualties, knowing that the fate of Burma, rested in their hands. For the remainder of the day, both sides rushed to bring more reinforcement, as the battle intensified. As the bulk of the 17th Indian Division neared the bridge, the pressure on the 46th Brigade also increased. By the evening, all three brigades, became a mixed-up crowd squeezed into a small area around the bridge, while destroyed and burning vehicles piled in front of it, blocked their way to safety. During the night, the confusion reached its peak. Brigadier Hugh Jones, under strict orders not to allow the bridge to fall into Japanese hands, unable to make contact with the command of the 16th, nor the 46th Brigade east of the river, was convinced that the bridge would fall the following morning, requested permission to demolish the bridge from the division commander. Without having clear insight into the situation at the bridgehead, General Smith, granted permission to Brigadier Hugh Jones, to destroy the bridge at a time of his own choosing, and at 5.20 a.m., on the morning of February 23, 1942, while a substantial part of the 17th Indian Division, still remained on the eastern bank of the river, 
three massive detonations, destroyed the bridge over the Sitang River. Hugh Jones's decision to destroy the bridge, left almost two entire brigades, the 16th and 46th, and at least one battalion of the 48th Brigade, on the wrong side of the river, cut off from the only way to escape. Having no other option, many tried to swim across, and a large number drowned in the attempt, while others, tried to cross the river with the aid of logs or improvised rafts. Others dispersed, and made their way northward through the jungle, while many surrendered to the Japanese. Out of more than 10,000 men of the 17th Indian Division, on February 23, 1942, only 3,500 remained, and only half of them, still carried the weapons. Without any doubt, the Battle of the Sitang Bridge, cannot be characterized other than as a disaster, that had catastrophic consequences, and was a turning point in the early stage of the Burma campaign. Combined with the battles that preceded it, the early stage of the invasion of Burma, was a decisive Japanese victory.